let's talk about some large sample tests. What are some of our large sample tests? There are three of them. Why might we we need hmm, why might we be interested in these large sample tests as opposed to the TM that we've been using before? Why does it come up at all? Why when we have a large sample don't we just use why don't we just use the old T or F for that matter? Why did they why did statisticians dream up these alternative test statistics? Do you know the difference between parametric and non parametric? Probably in the beginning statistics, you learned that the T and the F test were both parametric tests. Right? And by comparison, you know, something you learned about was, uh, what was the rank order test we were telling you about? Yeah. The Man Whitney test would be a rank order test to see whether or not the sequencing of things different between two samples would be the non parametric test, the Wilkes test or Man Whitney and there are a whole bunch of other. So those would be non parametric. So what's the difference between a parametric test and a non parametric test? You know? I don't know. Large sample test, we use those. We're still trying to get over the difference between parametric and non parametric. Uh, uh, people use parametric tests and they aren't sure the Gaussian assumption is violated. They use non parametric Non-parametric when they're not sure about the underlying distribution. Oh, okay. So we use a non-parametric test. If we know the distribution of things, we can always rely on a parametric test. And parametric tests are always more powerful than non-parametric tests in the sense that we've already talked about. Yeah. Right. Right. Is a t-test a parametric test? Is an f-test a parametric test? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. is, um, the wall test a parametric test? Um, I know it's a large sample test. Correct. Right. Yeah. One of the other things we're going to talk about later is asymptotics, limiting distributions and things like that. So wall, which we don't have a special but we, high square. When we're using the wall, where do we get the critical values? We compare our observed test statistics with a critical value for the wall test. Where do we get the critical value? And it's, it home was, uh, we, we spent some time on home already. Let's try Jeff Laura. Where do we get the critical values for the wall test, or the likelihood ratio, or the run multiplier? Uh, I want to use the wall test to test the equality of means uh, in two samples. And so I'm going to construct the wall statistic, and I'm going to compare what I observed with a critical value that I got from where? Usually we use W to represent the wall. You want to use the comparison. When you're testing, when you're using a t test to test the hypothesis about the mean, where do you look up the critical value? In the t-table. Yeah. If you're doing an analysis of variance test, where do you look up the critical value? In an f-table. So now my question is, what kind of table are you going to use for looking at the critical value when you're using a wall study? JJ, where do we look up the critical value for our wall test? What table? Um, I know it has something to do with beta hat and beta zero. There's a difference beta hat and beta zero. Somebody told me that when we were doing a conventional parametric test on the population mean, we constructed a t statistic and we looked up students' t table to find the critical value. And somebody and they agreed that if they were using ANOVA, they would look up the f tables. What tables are you going to look up when you are using a wall statistic? And it's a, it's a non-parametric test, right? Yes, we've already established that too. We're now okay. we're the ground that we've already covered. Right. Um, <laughs> high square. High square. High square. <laughs> <laughs> and Green told us that there were three of these large sample tests, the run, multiply, wall, and likelihood ratio. We now know that when we're looking at the critical value for a wall, we're going to look it up in a chi-square table. In what in what tables do you suppose we're going to look up the critical values for uh, the run multiplier and likelihood ratio? Uh, also in the chi-square. Also in the chi-square. So now we have three large sample test statistics constructed three different ways, and we get the critical values all out of the same chi-square table. Does that mean? that if we use the same data set to construct W, the run multiplier statistic, and the likelihood ratio statistic, that they would all be the same? We construct all three from the same data. Or all three, and we read the critical values out of the same chi-square data. The observed test statistic. Yeah. And it's different because? Uh, yeah, the formulas are different. Yeah. I'll give you that. 
Lacey tells us that the observed Hessen statistics, Langley ratio, Wald, and Run multiplier, computed out of the same data set, are going to be different because the formulas are different. Mm -hmm. Are they different in the sense that the parentheses are in different places, or do they use the data differently? They use the data differently. And what's the sense in which they use the data differently? What's the sense? Uh, you mean like in terms of wall statistic, we're going to reject the null for large values of W? In, in, ter in terms of the yeah, We always reject the null for large values of the test <coughs> Let's uh, put some things on the board here. Let's suppose that beta is some parameter of interest. And we're going to construct a wall statistic as our estimator minus the null hypothesis times the inverse of the variance of beta hat, first multiplied by the discrepancy between what we did see and what we thought was the case, beta zero. So that's our wall statistic. Our likelihood ratio is minus two times the log of the likelihood under beta hat, and finally, our Lagrange multiplier test statistic is the gradient under the null hypothesis, post multiplied by the, the metric on which we measure things, post multiplied by the gradient under beta zero. So now the question is still on you, Nick. Given the notation, what's the sense in which we've used the sample differently? I got a big uh, curvature. Ah, that's an interesting point. We there is a problem with the likelihood ratio test. And the problem is that with the likelihood ratio test, we don't make any adjustment for the change in curvature between samples. Okay, so that's an interesting discussion, but that's coming in a few minutes. The wall statistic is the true or false. The wall statistic is computed only at the sample data. Now let me, while you're thinking about this, let me ask other people another question. What's the difference between a yard and a meter? It's a different metric. Do you, think it's, do you think the difference is important? Mm, I think NASA would argue with you about that, right? Didn't NASA fly one of its satellites into the surface of Mars because they forgot that they were measuring in meters and not feet? So the choice of metric matters, and you've got to pay attention. So these two terms in the middle are changing the metric to accommodate the curvature in the likelihood function between uh, data sets. So it's like, yeah, so it's, you've got to keep track of the fact that in one place, you're measuring in meters, in another place you're measuring in feet, so that you don't make any mistakes. And the, it has the advantage, there's a little picture in your online lecture notes, that shows that if the radius of curvature differs between two data sets, your test statistic, the test in the same null hypothesis, will come up with two different numbers if you don't make some adjustments for the change in metric, the change in radius of curvature. So now we'll come back to Nick's question. Are we using the data differently between the three test statistics, and what's the way in which it differs? Because I know you're going to say, yes, it does differ. Yeah, it does differ. Yeah. And I would say that the likelihood ratio looks like a, a linear slope uh, of the beta hat and beta. Uh, what's this thing? It's not British pound sterling. It's just a symbol. It's, that's the, the likelihood the, function. Li likelihood and where are we evaluating the likelihood function? At the, the mean. At beta hat. The sample data. What's this? The likelihood, the likelihood of the, the mean evaluated at the null hypothesis. At the restricted in the restricted sample space, we're evaluating the likelihood function. Here, we're evaluating the likelihood function at the unrestricted sample space. Where are where are we evaluating the gradient here? Relative to the null. At the restriction. Where are we evaluating the inverse of the information matrix? At the at the restriction, okay? And we're evaluating the gradient at the restriction. So here, we're evaluating things at both the sample and the restriction. Here, only at the restriction. Here, we're concocting W only at the sample. So that's how we're using things differently. For the likelihood ratio test, we need to evaluate things using both the restriction and the sample statistic. In wall, we only need to evaluate things at the sample data, and at the Lagrange multiplier test, we evaluate things only at the restriction. So the data requirements are quite different between the three, and we will come up with different numbers for the three tests. So what do you do if you go out and you get your three test statistics, and it turns out that they straddle the critical value, so that for certain tests you would reject, and for others you wouldn't? What do you do? Hope like hell that it doesn't happen. You have to be smart about the test? I guess that's as good an answer as any. I don't know what to do. Go out and collect some more data and try again. Dr. Buck, did you say with the wall statistics we evaluate at the restriction and... No, the, no. only at the sample. Only at the sample. Right. 